Hey, what's up guys? I'm still Gabe, a developer advocate here at Hex. And welcome to this episode on how to get data into your Hex projects. In the previous episode, we took a deep dive into the world of navigating the Hex UI with the goal of giving you guys the essential tools you need to start building your own projects. I know what you might be thinking, Gabe, how can I start doing my own data analysis if I don't even know how to get data into Hex in the first place? Lucky for you, in this episode, we will be showing you the different ways that you guys can load data into your projects. Specifically, we'll be looking at file uploads, uh, how to connect to external databases with data connections, how you can share those data connections with your team, and lastly, how you can write SQL queries against these data connections in order to load data into your projects. By the end of this, you'll know where and how to get data sets into your projects, allowing you to conduct data-driven analysis and uncover valuable insights. Anyway, let's get into it. If you're watching this video, you're likely a data enthusiast, which means you've probably heard of this file type called a CSV, which stands for Comma Separated Value. Now, these files are like candy to data scientists because they're super lightweight, really easy to use, and you don't need any specialized software in order to use them. But how can we get these files into Hex? So when starting a new project in Hex, you see that we have a few options to help us get started. And one of those options is to upload a CSV file. So I can click on this to bring up a browser, or I can do my preferred option, which is to actually just drag and drop a file over into this upload window. Now, when I upload my file, you'll notice that a few things happen. First thing that happens is that a brand new SQL cell is created for us with our order details CSV ready to go. And this is really cool because I don't know any other tool that allows us to query CSV files directly. And what I mean by that is that, yes, you can write actual SQL code against a CSV file within your SQL cell. So for example, if I said, let me actually just see only the first 10 rows, or so I can do limit 10, rerun that cell, and you didn't see much change, but I'll redo that so you can see something a little bit different. Let's do limit, let's do limit five, for example. Limit for the first five rows, and now I can only see like the first five rows. Or maybe I want to filter my data to say something like where order status is equal to completed. All right, run that. And now we are seeing our only where the order status is completed. This is super cool. I don't know of any other tools that allow you to query CSV files directly without using some type of external Python package or SQL configuration, combobulation, ba 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 ba. <laughs> and secondly, we saw a pop up appear at this window. And if you missed it, it said that our order details CSV is available in our files tab. Now you may be wondering, Gabe, what in the world is the files tab? And I think now it's time to address something that I've been trying to hide from you guys for a while. And that is this logic view sidebar. Now, the logic view sidebar basically gives you more fine grained control over the things that are happening in your logic view. For example, we can search my project in the search tab, I can change some environment settings in my environment tab, or I can upload more files in my files tab. Now, there are a lot more tools in this file sidebar that we'll cover in due time, but for now, let's just stick on with this files tab. And over the next few episodes, we will be using this dumplings order data set to show you guys how you can analyze real data inside of Hex. And also, who doesn't love a good dumpling? <laughs> so here we can see that our order detail CSV has been uploaded and we also have the option to add more files if we want. Now we can add more files by selecting this add button, which will bring up a new window where we can browse more files or we can drag and drop more files into this window. And I can select all these files at once if I wanted to, drag them all in there. And yes, I want to overwrite and we can upload these three files like that. Super simple, super easy, bam, bam, bada, bop, boom. Now you may be wondering, Gabe, are there any like limitations on how big or how many files I can upload at once? Well, I'm so glad you asked because you could upload up to a hundred files as long as each file is less than two gigabytes. A two gigabyte CSV file is pretty, pretty crazy. So you're doing some pretty heavy analysis if you're uploading two gigabyte files. And files also persist throughout the lifetime of your project, meaning that you don't have to worry about uploading this file over and over and over again. You upload it once and it's just always gonna be there just waiting for you safe at home. I mean, it's not just CSV files. You can upload almost any type of file to Hex. You can upload JSON files, images, GIFs, videos, and the list goes on and on and on. All right, so what if your CSV file isn't local to your computer where you can't just upload it into your Hex project? Well, Hex actually supports external file integrations, meaning that you can import files from something, say like an S3 bucket directly into your projects. So I already have a project with that set up and I'll show you guys how that works right now. All right, so I have these S3 buckets that are all ready to go for me and all I have to do is import 
import them into my project once they're imported I can click on the uh, I can click on the connection and select the files that I want to import into my project and we see that we just have the one volcano data CSV so I will select this and then I will import this into my project now I can treat this file exactly like a normal CSV or I can create it with an SQL cell or I can start manipulating it with a Python or in pandas with the Python data frame so what I'll do is I'll just hit a uh, query all right, so now we can see that we have our external file in our hex project ready for us to write queries against. And the nice thing about this is that now it's going to be treated like a normal CSV file where we can write queries against this and then all the results are returned as a Python data frame, which we see here at the bottom, meaning that we can now manipulate this data frame or this CSV further in Python. All right, well, let's leave files alone for a little bit and let's focus back on this SQL cell that we have in the middle of our project. Now you may have noticed this drop down that says data frames in our SQL cell. What this signifies is that the data source for this cell are any of the Python data frames in our project or any CSV files that we've uploaded. The alternative to using a data frame would be to use a data connection, which is how you can connect to external databases such as Snowflake, BigQuery, etc, etc. If you've worked with these data sources before in a notebook environment, you likely use some type of database connection tool such as SQL Alchemy. Well, this is no longer needed since in Hex, you can create native database connections that are more secure, easier to set up, and they're way, way, way easier to reuse. Alright, so by default, all Hex projects come with a demo data connection ready for you guys to use out of the box, so batteries are included. And now if I want to use a data connection in my project, I can go to my data sources tab and then find the connection that I want to use and then select import. Now any SQL cell in my project has access to this data connection, which I can change like this. Now every query that I write will be against the Snowflake demo connection and it will no longer be against my CSV file, meaning that this query will actually now return an error. So let me just rerun this again to show you guys what happens. Do, 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 do. Yep, so as expected, we have an error that basically says the CSV file does not exist or is not authorized, which is fully expected because we changed from data frames to our data connections. Thankfully for us, this table is actually available in our data, our demo data connection, which I can look for in the data browser. All right, so I can get to my data browser by selecting this browse option in the SQL cell, <clears throat> or I can simply, if I am in this view right here, I can select the data connection that I want to browse and just click on it and I'll be able to search through my data connection. Now, I want to use the exact data set from before, but I have no idea where the data set is. Yes, I do. Now, I could manually look through this entire connection by going through all these different databases and different folders and finding the tables that I want to use, or I could just search it. So I will come up here and I will type in order details, details, and the table popped up in analytics prod and we see order details right here. And I can get a nice little preview of the data types and the column names of my table by clicking on it. So if I click on it again, it goes away. If I click on it again, it reappears. Now this is really helpful if I want to get an idea of the structure of my data before I use it. And when I'm ready to start querying the data, I can actually just hit the query button right here and it will create a brand new SQL table for me. This is so nice. It seems like Hex just loves me so much because I have not needed to create a single cell myself. It has been created for me each time I've been working in this project. So now we see that we have our data, we have our data loaded from our database connection rather than our CSV and we can write the same query. Say for example, I want to now filter on the orders where the status is completed and I can copy this filter and add it in there run my cell and we will see that we have only completed orders you may be thinking Gabe as cool as hex is for giving me a data connection to use out of the box how can I use my own data with my own data connections well in the next episode I'll be showing you guys how you can use your own data connections in hex so we can start no I'm just kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding that would be a crazy cliffhanger adding your own data connections is actually pretty straightforward so in the data sources tab we'll go back to all sources and we will see this add button right here in the top corner and what this does will bring up a couple of options for us it will allow us to create a data connection connection or it allows us to create a workspace connection. Now these two options sound the same and they basically are but they, they work in a slightly different way. The first way will actually create a data connection on the project level and this means that we will only have access to this data connection in this project only. So if I create a new project I actually won't have any access to this data connection. All right and the second option actually creates a data connection at the workspace level and what this means is that this data connection will be available to all projects to all users who have access. But what does that mean to all users who who have access well in hex you're allowed to create groups of users you can give this group of users certain permissions for example let's say i create a data connection and i want only my marketing team to have access to the data connection and not say my development team or my engineering team but let's actually create a data connection just to see how this works so i can go up to my data connections tab and i will hit add and let's just create a project connection for now 
So what I'll do is I'll hit on add. It'll bring up all the data connection or the available data warehouses that we have available to connect to. And I will choose this Snowflake one. Now, give me one second. I'm just gonna type all this information in. We'll pick it back up once I get everything added. Hex code today. Today. All right, so I have all my credentials typed in. I have my name, description, I have my account name, warehouse I wanna to connect to. And at the bottom, we have some options for integrations. Now, integrations, we have DBT, which will allow you to see kind of like that rich documentation in your uh, data browser as you look into your schema. And then Snowpark integration just allows you to use uh, the Snowpark uh, API with your data connections. And we'll talk about this more in a later video. And then the last thing is access. Share this data connection with my workspace. And if I turn this off, then no one else in my workspace will actually have access to this and only I will have access to it but I want to turn this on because I do want other people to see this data connection but I don't want it to be every single person in my workspace I only want it to be a select few people so what I'll do is I'll actually add a group and I'll do marketing because I only want my marketing team to see this and now anyone who's not in the marketing team won't have access to this data connection and I also will turn right back on and this just makes it so that I can not only query this data, but I can actually write data back to the database and update any tables that I want to uh, alter. So now I will just hit this create connection button and we should see it in our project. All right, cool. So now we see that we can use this workspace connection in this project. And just to show you guys that we actually do have access to this in another project, let's go ahead and create one and see if we have access to that demo connection. So let's go to our sources. Let's go to all sources. All right, I see both of my connections. Now, I want something I want you guys to keep in mind is that only admins have the ability to create workspace data connections. So if you're trying to create a workspace connection and you're not able to, make sure to check if to see if you're admin. And if you're not, make sure to get in contact with an admin if you want to add that data connection to your workspace. Oof, man, this was a bit of a longer one, but I congratulate you for making it all the way to the end. <gasps> All right, so we talked about a whole bunch this time around, but some things for you guys to keep in mind. You can upload up to 100 files to Hex using the Files tab on the sidebar, as long as these files are less than two gigabytes. And these can be Excel files, CSVs, Parquet files, and you can directly query them with SQL. Data connections are an easy and secure way to get data from any warehouse or database into Hex. And lastly, there are two levels to the data connection. There's the workspace level and the project level. In the next video, we will be diving into the meat and potatoes and be showing you guys how you can write some real code against real data so that you can build up some complex logic and answer real questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed being in your presence. And in the spirit of the data set that we're using, feel free to leave a comment with your favorite dumpling. Mine would have to be a pot sticker maybe. I guess pot stickers are dumplings, hopefully they are. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Otherwise, we talk about it just all the time. You know what happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Wait, you're still here? Bro, you gotta go, bro. Come on, bro. Get some analysis done. Come on, bro. Get a hex.